Right, good morning. I'm sorry for the shaky camera. Uh, you can see here, Cohen is already attacking me. We're in late February. I think today's like 24th. The weather is way too nice. Today I'm kind of excited because today we are working on a project that has been a butt kicker. Out here on this beautiful Saturday in the back cold storage of the shop, just walking over to Puff. We're just trying to get started. We have a material coming in on Monday to work on it. Hmm. I need a good sign. The project today is going to be this right here. Gunny, what are you doing sleeping on the floor, man? Come on, buddy. All right, so <laughs> Gunny here actually has a dog bed as he's like, rub my belly, but he decides not to sleep in it. It is really funny. He'll sleep on the lawn. He'll sleep in the middle of the shop floor, just like that. Uh, it's really funny. What do you do? If you notice right there, we actually have Mechanic Larry splitting stands. Now we're gonna take the tractor again, split it, go after the transmission and the rear end. And, uh, well, that's just the way it goes sometimes, you know? <laughs> What's really crazy is from here to about here, the tractor's already rebuilt. Took about 15 grand to do it, but hey. <laughs> from the fuel tank to literally the cab, that's already rebuilt, we're good. A hydraulic pump, piston pump, we got rebuilt water pump. We got the initial clutches behind the motor that are rebuilt. And then the first clutch pack, C1, C2, I believe it is, uh, going in the transmission. We already got that rebuilt. Yeah, cool. So that initial 15 grand, gone. But we got something to show for it. Last January, when me and Larry were ripping motors down, I looked at Larry, I'm like, if this was December instead of going into February, we'd just roll that rear end out from underneath that cab and go through the rear end. Should have listened to that advice. Now we're doing it, it's just like a year later. <laughs> so now we're gonna see you start ripping this thing apart again, this time going after the rear end. Things aren't going too bad on this Sunday morning, that's for sure. Got the hood off, which that's always a little bit of an adventure when you're doing it yourself. A couple straps, cherry picker, yeah, you can make it work. Right now, if you see the buckets there, I got all the coolant drain. And so the next step is gonna be start hooking up the splitting stands, because we're gonna put the splitting stands on. These bolts right here are what are called the bell housing bolts. And there's six or eight of them, I forgot how many. Those are the bolts that basically hold the transmission to the engine assembly. So we're gonna start loosening those up. probably heard the joke old man strength mechanic larry is 64 years of age and he's like 180 pounds soaking wet and how he gets crap so tight oh, i'll never understand but man all the morning it's like holy crap everything's like larry tight which is very tight <laughs> so if you see this larry hats off and respect player <laughs> you're still a tough guy for being 64 years of age this bottom one right here is just when you think you got it all figured out, you forget a bolt in place. And we are not far away. I got a little more wiring up there and some oil lines up top I got to get off. But things are just going in the right direction. Hey, come here. All right, come on. This is a nice way to start a Monday morning, isn't it? Having a tractor in two pieces when I get it. That's pretty cool. So we have these ultra-fine filings, and we have them coming in the rear end. I do not remember if it was the trans filter or the hydraulic filter, which filter it was actually coming from. But before we rip into this, what do you think is actually going on in that track? I'd tell you you could let the younger generation do that, but you will just argue with me. <laughs> right now, right. if you were just betting on your 40 years of experience, when we open it up, what do you think we're gonna see? Brake linings in the brake pack, you got your, your power shift brake pack, and that's the linings are gonna be, I'm assuming gonna be worn off. We'll also look for brake plate filings, linings, and maybe pulling wheels and axles to look at brakes too. Whenever Larry's around, it just goes really smooth like that. Something about 40 years of experience, yeah. One day I'll get there. We'll look at look into the differential, see what it looks like, but I would say it's going to be brake pack. And the main difference, the, the, the brake pack's actually in the main transmission pack, but then the other brake is the actual physical brake you put with your foot with, on. With the linings and then the, and the pads, and those, those 
typically are, they're, they're noted for yep. wearing off. And... Oh, oh, oh. Is that supposed to roll out? Yeah. Back end? Okay. And I'm glad I didn't try to catch it. It is heavy. Wow, that thing is solid. And then when they wear off, when the fiber wears off the plate, then the pad and the, and the steel and the steel rub together, and you can get small problems in that too. So it's possible it's that, but I'm thinking it's gonna be more brake pack. All right, there you can see, we got the rear end rolled out. This is all Larry's brainchild, man, I'm telling you. I take no credit in this. I, he just tells me what bolts and lines to take out, and then uh, I do that. There we go, we got the rear end out. Back end of C, C1, C2, PTO. Yep. This is going to go right into that clutch pack. PTO, so th this is anytime engine is turning, this is running. When the engine's running, this shaft's spinning, and we got oil flow into these into these clutch packs, right? This, That's this, your speed. This whole big chunk, whatever engine RPM is, this whole clutch pack is spinning. This is this is bolted stationary, obviously. So this is turning, which that whole chunk is turning, which in turn these clutch packs get locked with oil pressure. This, when the PTO is engaged, is into this last one. Okay. When I'm the operator in the cabin, I just throw that little yellow lever. Oil pressure locks these clutch packs up, which then locks these gears up. Two, and then those gears are going to spin. <laughs> okay. So when PTO is spinning, it goes down here. And it's just spinning all of those gears. Which in turn turns the power takeoff PTO shaft, shaft. shaft. back in. So just keep spinning that real quick. So that's the spinning. And if we go out here to the back of the tractor, you can see our shaft spinning. Oh, that's crazy. Wow. Oh, that is cool. Now we go to the power takeoff brake, the one that's in, hydraulically engaged. This little brake shoe goes into the front end here. There's a little piston. Hydraulic oil pressure pushes this out, pushes this cone-shaped brake against this cone-shaped gear. And that's what stops that's... power takeoff from turning. Wow. But as you can tell, we don't have- That one smoked. We no don't have any lining left on it. This is where the brake ride, how there was no lining, it got metal against metal, there's some grooves on it. And that will probably have to replace that gear and that's probably a thousand dollars from John Deere, new. I heard in that whole conversation, first thousand dollars. <laughs> we should make a list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we might have to do that, yeah. Just start itemizing it. <laughs> this housing is 33. Years. <laughs> All right, last summer we rebuilt a 4955 we ran. Whole time, in the back of my head, I was 10,000, you know, just what it's going to take. What are we playing here? Are we playing the over under five, over under 10? Right now, me personally, I'll use that 10K mark as the so benchmark. It's a high water uh, Yeah, well, fingers crossed. <laughs> so we got the first thousand. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not over yet. Stay tuned. <laughs> so, but that that's now with that locked in solid, I can't turn the PTO, obviously. So that's that's the whole theory of the power takeoff on a eight speed power. Shift. That's and crazy. You can drop a gear again. Hey, we know it's tough. <laughs> I wonder how many holes you got in your oil paint. That don't matter. That one's been ran over and straightened out a couple times. Let's see where my, where my washers are. We'll put all this back over on the bench. And yep. Start working on getting the brake pack out. It Let's is see cool to see all of that machined iron spinning around, man. It, I mean, you, you think about the, the, the torque, the centrifugal force. This is heavy. Mm hmm. And that is, anytime engine's running, that whole chunk is spinning. Yes, it, it's supported in the back end by bearings and things, but still, it's it's a heavy chunk to have that thing just flopping in there. So now the only downside is right now, <clears throat> we're gonna pop the rock shaft off in a couple covers, and I'm gonna know within probably $1,500 to $2,000 what the overall bill is gonna be. Now the moment of truth. They don't look that bad. Good. 
Well, the only bad downside, we're probably gonna have one wheels and axles. Yeah. But this so far looks good. That way a little bit. Up. Hold it. Straight up. It is February and we have the shop door open. But now we're at that fun part, where the fun part is, if you see that big hunk of metal that's right there, that is your C1 and C2, B1 and B2. B1, B2, B3, nope. B4. We're just gonna re-illustrate who's the rookie or grasshopper <laughs> and who's the old school veteran. Okay, so B1, B2 clutch pack, now. And C3. And C3. Okay, so this is the main thing that determines what gear the tractor is going in, right? Uh, along with that. These two, both, both these clutch packs play together. Three elements have to be engaged for every gear. At least one clutch and two brakes, or two clutches, one brake. Three elements have to be engaged for every gear at some point. What I know is this is the time frame when we find out exactly on our over or under 10 game gamble. <laughs> we can use, even, an, even a grasshopper like me can usually depict if we're going over or under by watching Larry take that clutch pack apart. Brake pack. Brake pack. <laughs> <laughs> and on each each one of these, there's a, there's a piston, again. And there's a ceiling. Good automatic transmission out of the car would have. You pull those seals, you put new ones on, and put it all back together. That is the piston that has to come up against this and lock these linings together. There's, there's a spring that holds them apart when they're not engaged. And then when you put oil pressure against that piston, that piston pushes down against this plate to lock that element in gear. Now there's springs, we have to take, get rid of all the springs, and we just start taking the linings off, inspecting. This is usually where I can tell when the linings come apart in pieces, how expensive it's gonna be, but so, so far, far. So far, so good. But we're only into one, one break. So the one you're pulling apart right now, would this be like speeds one, two, and three, or? Not necessarily, it could be any one. This is, anyone. This is actually B4. I've got a chart that could tell you exactly which element is engaged in which gear. And I, I haven't memorized it, but it's. Well, you got a bunch of grandkids, like there's more important things in the world. This gear runs, there's a compound planetary pack inside it. That one looks good. A lot of times this will be worn and this housing will be worn real bad. So you can't, it, they don't, it, it's loose. This one is very nice. It's nice and snug. Now we have under here, this is our C3 or clutch number three under this pack. Gotta grab a socket and we'll pull that apart. We're gonna pull a C3. Just see what our clutch lines in there look like. Again, piston spring loaded to return. It's just called Bell Bell washer, and that's what returns the piston to its neutral position. Oh, nice. So we look at these linings, they look very nice. The 
cooks really good for 10,000 hours. Yes, it does. Too good. Like, too good? <laughs> We, we've had, we, we've been unsure all day and afternoon. When we first just started dismantling and rolling the rear end away, we never thought anyone had been in this rear end before. And usually that's, sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. We, Larry found silicone on one of the top covers, which might have indicated that somebody might have been in it, or at the bare minimum replaced the line and resealed it. But this is looking really good for for the, for the hours that's on Yeah. Which is a good thing because it's saving on a checkbook so far. Usually, it goes really fast sometimes uh, and uh, This is the B3 pack and the piston on that one actually came right out. Which can indicate bad seal? Uh, a loose seal. You get a bushing worn here. Okay. That would indicate 10,000 hours. Well, maybe it did sit in a baler more hours than we want to admit. Now, B3 oh. is one when I was looking at him, I thought it looked like it possibly had some issues, but so far, how many of these trappers have we had them where the clutch linings just come out, or the friction just, There's just nothing, come apart? There's metal and metal. Yep. Oh, yeah, they just come apart like that. Uh, they just come apart in pieces. I saw a chunk laying in there, and I thought, oh, that don't look so good. Yep. Wow. They're at the end of their life, man. I would say they uh, got the maximum use out of them. <laughs> These are all looking fantastic. Yeah. That's the only thing that I've seen so far. To that, can you put a new wear sleeve in there? Or put a I'm pretty sure I'll look, I've got the parts break down the with me, so we'll be able to go through that. One came out there too. And washers. This, for some reason, this one had shim washers on it also. Okay. Have you ever seen that before? I, I just, the one I did last week had it. Okay. But our planetary is also looking pretty decent. Like we've seen those where there's gears missing. Mm -hmm. That's the most expensive part about this. These friction mists are actually really expensive compared to that assembly of gears right there. Wow. It is looking really nice. There's, I don't see you. You remember on the couple we had where that that gear would start wearing in. Had worn right in. Yeah. Nice. I will tell you, just me personally, I've wanted to have this part of the whole process on film for years because I'm hoping in 2040 when mechanic Larry's like sipping my ties on the beach with his wife and counting the great grandkids, uh, Eric's still here being able to pull this stuff apart and put it back together. I don't know if you really are into Mai Tais, but you know. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> right now it does, don't it, with that nice weather. Uh -oh. It's still unbelievable having the shop door open. Now they have it. Yeah, but it looks, we're both happy it's in one piece. Wow. Look how nice that looks. There we go. Only where I've seen that's oh now we've got we do got yeah I'm looking at it right now. Uh okay. What is that right up on then? That bushing that we have. Oh okay, but that shouldn't be a surprise with that bushing starting to go. What does that indicate? Is that a wear item or does that mean we gotta go it's to a wear item but yeah that's it's okay. That's the housing, actual housing itself. Should there have been another bushing there? Uh -uh. Okay. That's the only one, but why is that worn and nothing else is? 10,000 hours. It does have enough wear in it, too. The only cool thing, that might be something a machine shop could make a ring for. 
You might be able to machine it. I know. Well, let's see. There's a cover. We'll pop this cover off, and then we can see what the pins. This is this is the area that generally, if the pins are worn excessively. They've got somewhere. But for the hour mark yeah. on the tractor. If they get worn too far, it, the centrifugal force, it throws them up, <clears throat> then it breaks that ring gear or this ring gear. This is a finished ring gear. So it could, it'll actually push out enough that it'll break the gear. Yeah, we've had uh, a couple 50s. Yep. Yeah. This guy's got weird, but not, not like I would anticipate. I don't know how much is, I don't know how much has gone off of this ledge on the bottom slide. Yeah, you can see that where you feel the step. That'd be something, because we know it goes into that rear ring. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go, if the tractor, if these hours could be accurate. Mm -hmm. Farmer Bob actually did a good job in South Dakota about changing his oil. And uh, not a lot of moisture, and got used just enough, but it was used for lighter weight stuff, like running a uh, running bale. The springs. Uh, one just rolled out. They're trying to keep the springs and everything together with B1, B2, B3, B4. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be good. Just to eliminate problems? Well, because there's, there's different length on the springs. Oh, there is, okay. There's three, three of one length and one another. And the reason for those shims, it was something that was a, when you air check it, you push the, you, you take a measurement of how much clearance there is, and then you're supposed to add shims to it. However, this one's got them. the nicest pack you've ever pulled apart, break pack. Yes, it is. I got it right that time. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, it, it looks nice. Other than the where we've got here. Yeah, which... And that would give us excessive... That If that's bouncing around in there, that could give you excess side play on these two. Yeah, and the other thing could be a spot where our really extremely fine filings are mm -hmm. coming from. Yeah, because you got to remember, there's... There's a lot gone after that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I take. I think I can take that. Hold on a second. Oh, you can see it when you dropped it on it. Explain some things. Yeah, you can kind of see the gap there. Mm -hmm. How it's right now, there's pressure on it, so it's all the way down. If I pick it up where it normally rides, oh, because I don't have that washer on either. And that would, yeah, actually, it's really interesting when you drop that on, you could see, because, yep, that's moving back and forth. A new bushing will help, but it's not going to last real long with the rough. Yeah. You ever had? You ever seen that before? Nope. Huh? Nope. So you got to get that. That's that's expensive. That's the expensive part. Good news it in grenades. We got cool wall art. Yeah, everything else. Everything else is good. Man, if a machine shop could just... If that's what I'm wondering if we couldn't do that, Eric, actually. Machine it down. Because the book may give us a spec on the ID of that bushing. Yep. And I don't know if we have to take... Go see if our friends at Novox are uh, still friendly. I was there on Friday. I was there on... It was either. Who are you dealing with over there now? Kim. Yeah, me too. No. Yeah. Well, he, he knows his stuff. I brought him a turbo downpipe for a plastic vehicle. And uh, yeah. 
We're gonna see if we can get to that project this year, yeah. <laughs> You might not be able to see it in the camera. There you can just a little bit, just a little bit. It looks like a display, That's that means it's warped. So all of this work was not for naught. It's worth it. Yep. But the lighting's look good. Farmer Frank must have, uh, f must have always had really good oil in it. What, we got a small job here, huh? Is it supposed to just slide out? Yeah, it is. But <laughs> well, remember, we're just supposed to be working with something that's supposed to be eight inches and not six. <laughs> I can't tell it. Guys. All right, we are. It's a good thing you've got two skids, huh? Yeah, that's what happens when Mark's not here. We just keep you. Yeah. Is that all you got done today? Yeah. 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 Oh. I thought I was going to be back together already. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Oh, we do have that problem with the carrier over there. We'll have to figure something We're still out. trying to figure that one out. The machine shop option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's one thing I'm going to tell you that you will probably never see this again, though. And that is February 26th, and the shop doors are open. And I've been open, and I'm in a t-shirt. And it's comfortable. Yeah, it feels like September. It's like we got your windows down the whole night. Yeah. What did you say was on the hour meters? The 9970? Yeah, like 99, something like that. Did you test out the dyno? No, just moved it so we could get. For a while there, actually, um, you've met him, but uh, Nathan stopped awesome. in. And then we had that skid loader hooked up with this skid loader on another set of axles. Yeah, or the other set of axles, and he's like, ah, it must be nice with two skid loaders. Yeah, what do you think we yeah. do when Mark's not here? Yeah, it is. Our skid loader guy is not here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That did work. Yeah, yeah. You can see what we do with two wheel loaders. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, it, 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 I think it went well. <laughs> yeah, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. It was funny because, like, a couple minutes ago, you were talking about, like, how you were going to get this far. I thought this is where we were going to try and get to today, but, um, I mean, a lot of trade-offs. We didn't find a smoking, smoking gun. Like, I was really hoping we were going to find, like, an annihilated brake pack. Brake pack. Oh, uh, yeah. The that's just going to be the re rebuild seal on that. Yeah. Yeah. Should we throw the this in, though? Maybe just throw the this in. Okay. You're talking probably $1,000 in this, mm -hmm. but wouldn't it suck in, like, six months or a year or two years? My real fear is Larry's getting close to retirement age. Oh, well, now you know how to do it, though. Yeah. <laughs> not as much fun when you're not in the shop with me, though. <laughs> yeah, I, know, so, I mean, you see my point, right? We're, we're going to, I mean, just the fact that more than likely, if those are original, those are 40-year-old clutch discs, man. 58 bucks a piece. Yeah. Four U's there. 
I mean, wouldn't it just suck though if like a year or two down the road we pull a filter apart and it's full of clutch linings? You know, I mean, this is the one thing, and the front packs are already redone. Remember, that was 2023's expenses. Yeah. So 2024, I mean, remember how we started February? Our farm parts plan had zero dollars on it. Yeah. Like, when has that ever happened? Getting excited about vacation? Yeah. <laughs> now, getting, this week, especially. Because now, like I said, I'll take and get that 4020, get that. If I get that engine out tomorrow, I'll get the head over to SNS, the uh, rods over to SNS. If we don't have anything with the crank, hopefully the block's good. It's a late model 4020, so it's a two over in block. So. I got a combine block you can have for free. That's a 466, this is a 404. You could build a really nice yeah. 466. <laughs> this, is, this is a really nice late model 4020. Yeah, no, I get it. It should oh, be. That's what I get for trying to slip that in subliminally. Like you could build a really nice 4020 motor. <laughs> I will load it for you. See the skid loader right next to me? <laughs> Typically what I do is I start at the beginning of page one of the perfect power shift. So keep going page to page. Page by yeah. page and then, and then you go back to brakes, you go up to differential. Usually you don't even build the parts list here. You do have vacation on the brain. Like, yeah. oh, Eric, do you think I'm going to remember this? <laughs> I'm thinking about this we have these lines, and as I'm looking, I just think it's interesting is that I'll take pictures of, uh, as I'm taking a tractor apart, I think I sent you the video of the, the I had the three benches on the 4650, yeah. and we just lined up. Yeah. No, I mean, that's the cool thing. I think it kind of gives us a neat avenue just to explore, like to show people our world. And that was, I, the one guy I wasn't sure, the one main spready guy, Butch, I wasn't sure if he was going to be down with uh, us and so I'm literally like standing behind him trying to film him as he's driving a tractor with a broken hitch down the road <laughs> and then later I was telling him and I'm like oh, you know, I realized like, we talked about it for years like wouldn't it be cool to actually tell people our story like uh, how crazy it is and how just like uh, over the top some of this crap we've had to do and then when I, I put that whole video together and showed him he's like this is really cool and then he was asking me good Catholic Czech farmer how do I get on YouTube yeah. <laughs> where it's just like, because that's where like everything has an expense. I mean, I'm looking at the line of equipment outside and it's like, I can't, all of that with our commercial insurance, I can't drop any of that insurance. And mm -hmm. so when I look at a $2,000 a month or more bill, mm -hmm. just for one company, out the window, there's nothing I can do, you know? And so it's, now, it's a cost of doing business. It, it, yeah, people say that, but it still sucks when you see <laughs> that debit every month out of the checking account and you're like, okay, that's going out. So yeah, I mean, we're not joking when we're, we're playing the game over under 10 grand, but to me, I also got to find humor in it because you can't dwell on that stuff every day to mm -hmm. go crazy. So I think what's going to happen when I get this one, I'll get the parts order, work on that a little tonight, tomorrow yep. morning, I'll get the 4020 part, tomorrow night I'll be working, so I think Wednesday and Thursday are going to be off this team. Yeah, I understand <laughs> that, yeah. yeah. You'll be working Before on, you go on vacation. Get everything, I, get everything I, uh, ordered and get, all I want to get, like I said, get the machining work from that engine overhaul over to the machine shop. How sucky is tomorrow gonna to be when you're like, this is the last tractor I'm working on before I'm going on vacation. And, and that is gonna be the last tractor. I'm yeah. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna hook up to my trailer tomorrow morning, go to Cleveland. Don't blame you. Minnesota, that is, not Ohio. Yeah. Cleveland, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Minnesota. <laughs>